On September 30th, 1938, Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain returned to London from Munich and declared that he had negotiated a deal with Hitler that said their two countries were never going to go to war again. Later from Downing Street, he said that it was peace for our time, and all it cost them was giving part of Czechoslovakia to the Germans. Hitler, apparently not having gotten his copy of the memo, later took several more Czech provinces and in September of 1939 invaded Poland, officially bringing Britain into the war. By May of 1940, the country had lost confidence in Chamberlain's ability to lead during wartime. And on May 10th, hours before the German invasion of France, Chamberlain resigned. His resignation opens Darkest Hour, a movie which centers around Winston Churchill's first three weeks in the position. A harrowing three weeks during which France collapsed and the British Expeditionary Force, some 400,000 men, were pushed all the way back to Dunkirk and Calais, with no hope of getting them out in time before the Germans rolled tanks in and slaughtered them all. I have no idea as to the accuracy of the dramatic aspect of this story. After he resigned, Chamberlain stayed on in the government and Churchill selected him as a member of his war cabinet, along with a Chamberlain loyalist that had turned down the position of Prime Minister, Stannis Baratheon. The movie sets up the two of them as Churchill's antagonists in the story. With most of Britain's infantry facing slaughter in France and no allies in sight, Chamberlain and Stannis favor opening up peace talks through Italy, which effectively would amount to surrender to Germany with terms. Churchill must decide. That is the context of Darkest Hour, a movie which I thoroughly enjoyed, starring Gary Oldman as the notorious Prime Minister. And I've had friends whose opinions I value tell me they found the movie dull. Man, I couldn't disagree more. To be clear, Darkest Hour is not really a war movie, nor is it a politics film. It's a biopic that attempts to use the events from a single month in his life to try and paint a portrait of one of history's most interesting and eccentric leaders. In the first three minutes of the movie where we meet Churchill, he's drinking scotch for breakfast, coughs into the phone as a hello to the French ambassador and accidentally flashes his undercarriage to a young new secretary. After screaming her from his bedroom, his wife provides what could be considered the movie's only thesis. It's me. He's, he's, he's a man. Like any other. The movie may center around politics, but that is because it is the service to which he has dedicated his life. When Churchill is confirmed, Clementine Churchill acknowledges that the family had to make peace with the fact that Churchill was never going to be much of a father due to the required sacrifices of public life. In the scene, his daughters can't make eye contact, and his son downs a glass of champagne almost vengefully. And sure enough, that ends up being as much of his family we get beyond his wife. And his conflict with Chamberlain and Stannis is not painted as simple moral black and white either. As easy as it is for us now to look back at the time and say who was right, painting Chamberlain and Stannis as simple antagonists, the movie gives them enough depth to be able to identify with their perspectives. Churchill was a hardliner dead set against negotiation. In Chamberlain's eyes and his desire for peace, I started to see a man who just 20 years before the events of the film was witness to a world war that cost 20 million lives. A war that everyone thought would end all wars. No one knew at the time what was about to happen, and I I found Chamberlain's desperate desire for peace relatable, and actually helps provide Churchill a meaningful arc in the story. Strangely, as I watched Darkest Hour, I kept finding myself reminded of the Harry Potter movies. But I think it's Joe Wright's direction in the movie that evokes the fanciful. He has a playful visual style here that never lets Darkest Hour actually feel like a war film. The colorful visual palette and the whimsical shot composition seem to be communicating that this is a movie about a man who led England against the Nazis, yes, but it's also about a a man who would wear a velvet onesie, could drink anyone under the table, and once spent a great deal of a 24-day trip to the White House naked. Of course, the internet's love affair with Gary Oldman is pretty well documented at this point, from Fifth Element to True Romance to Dracula. He is a scene stealer, one of the greatest supporting actors ever, but it's obvious that the Academy prefers a particular kind of movie, regardless of performance. DiCaprio finally cracked that codex, and now with Darkest Hour, Oldman may have as well. There isn't much to say, except that when you go and see a movie Gary Oldman is in, you know you're going to see something terrific. And you do. Oldman's performance as Churchill is charming, loving, offensive, rude, and hilarious. Gary Oldman is a treasure, yes, but I found Darkest Hour a charming and incredibly watchable movie in total. His pairing here with Joe Wright has created a portrait that is warm and welcoming and engrossing, one that I'm looking forward to seeing again. <laughs> He said, go back inside.